The Jets' bye week is here in Week 7, while the Giants are still going to be hosting the Commanders in Week 7. And both teams, they play each other in Week 8. So there's plenty of talk about where both clubs are right now. New York Post sports columnist Mark Canizaro, he wrote two recent columns on both teams, and he joins me now to discuss. Mark, how's it going? I'm doing great, Dex. How you doing? I'm doing well. Always good to see you. And Mark, I want to start by talking with you about the Giants. You wrote a column about how the G-men might need Tyrod Taylor, veteran backup quarterback, to save their quest for relevance. Daniel Jones, he's listed as questionable for the Week 7 matchup against Washington. So I got to ask you this. Based on what you saw from Taylor last week in Buffalo, can the veteran QB have the Giants looking at least respectable this week? Oh, I think he absolutely can. I mean, listen, I think this is kind of a toss-up game. I mean, maybe the Washington's favored by a couple of points, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I thought Taylor looked pretty good last week. He didn't turn the ball over. Uh, you know, his one issue was he didn't get, he didn't get the, you know, the Giants into the end zone. And, and Bill Parcells always says, and I've always respected Bill covering him for a million years and a million years ago, uh, you know, you judge a quarterback by how often he wins football games and gets his team in the end zone. Now, Tyrod moved the giant offense. It's not as if they were going three and out all night in Buffalo. But when they got down near the goal line, they couldn't get it done, obviously. He made that terrible mental mistake, obviously, at the end of the first half. Uh, and cost him three points when he checked, up, checked into the run play. Uh, and, uh, you know, you could certainly make the argument that uh, Darren Waller was, was, inter was interfered with on that last play of the game when they were down there. But even in between, he didn't get him in. You know, the three field goals is not going to win football games in the NFL. So... Uh, if, I know that this week in practice, speaking to a lot of the offensive players, uh, because the offensive touchdown drought, by the way, Dex, is is now at 205 game minutes right now. They have not scored an offensive touchdown since Matt Breida scored in that Thursday night game in September in San Francisco, at San Francisco. So this has been, you know, an issue for them, obviously, and the red zone in particular, and there's been a lot of emphasis, not that there isn't in most weeks of practice. But in speaking to offensive players this week uh, in the giant locker room, there's been a significant emphasis on the red zone. And I think if they can get over that hurdle, I think that Tyrod is 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 perfectly good in that role. I mean, there was some chatter this week that he looked good enough, you know, for, I didn't want to say chatter, there was sports radio chatter about, hey, you know, maybe they should just keep Tyrod in. The offense looked better with him in there than it did with Daniel. And quite frankly, the offense hasn't looked good with Daniel in there other than the second half of the Arizona game. So it'll be interesting to see how he plays on Sunday. You know, I, as I mentioned in the column I wrote today, hey, listen, what if he what if he goes 20 out of, you know, 20 out of 32 or something and throws three touchdowns, and doesn't turn the ball over and the Giants win convincingly and Daniel's cleared to play next week. You know, if you're if you're Brian Dayball, are you going to stick with the hot hand? who's had the offense functioning well for a couple of weeks, or do you go back to Daniel? I mean, that's going to be an interesting, it'd be a good dilemma for the Giants to have, obviously. Yeah, it would be a good dilemma for them to have. As you mentioned, the offense has been struggling with Daniel Jones. And, you know, middle of the season, everybody likes a little quarterback controversy. Some fans like that sometimes there, Mark. So we'll see how that all plays out. Now, the Jets, they are headed into the bye week coming off a big win over the Eagles. So at 3-3, three and three, this is a team that's had some quality wins after losing Aaron Rodgers for the season. Is there a strong bond or togetherness with this Jets team right now? And who's responsible for that vibe that's around the team this season? Well, yeah, Dexter, I wrote a column in for, for the Saturday Post about just the, the family, kind of the family-like bond that they have in that locker room. And, you know, I've covered football for 30-something years. You always hear teams, and in all team sports, you know, I've covered many other team sports. They all talk about how we're a family and whatnot. More often than not, that's sometimes maybe just, you know, they're hoping that it's that way or it's just kind of, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's it's just locker room speak or whatever. I really feel it with this team, you know, I, and, and particularly what I referred to in the column was when they when they beat the Eagles on Sunday – uh, last week, um, you talked, and there were a lot of players that made big plays in that game, particularly on defense. And, I, you know, every player you speak to, you spoke to in that locker room, they weren't talking about the play they made. They were crediting the other guy. And uh, it was it was really pretty fascinating to, to, to listen to that because, you know, we live in a, in a look-at-me world of, of sports athletes, right? And, you know, look what I did. And, you know, look at, you know, even just recently, Devontae Adams, you know, he's, he's getting frustrated and, 
in Vegas right now, and he made some comment the other day that was just outlandish about you know, about you know his personal stats versus the team success. These guys, every one of these guys, uh, you know, Jermaine Johnson in particular, unsolicited, where they were bringing about you know how, how blessed they are to play on this team with these guys. C.J. Mosley, who's a captain in there, I spoke to about it. Um, you know, Bryce Hall, a cornerback, you know, who I mentioned in the column. Who was a starter right out of right out of uh, you know college you know with the Jets has been usurped of that role because they they signed DJ Reed and they and they drafted Sauce Gardner. He's you know up until a few weeks ago he play, basically played almost no defensive snaps, and and yet now the last couple games you know he had scoop and score touchdown you know in the Denver game to clinch that game. He had a big pick in the Philadelphia game. I'm talking to him after the game, and he's not talking about his play. He's talking about the support that DJ and Sauce have given him, and the guys in the locker room. And you know, we got a really good story we're telling here that's going to be told at the end of the day. And so, yeah, I just I, I really felt it. You have to feel that. People talk about it, you know, about how close they are these teams, but I do feel it. And I think when you ask responsible, I think Robert Sala his his greatest strength is the ability to lead and bond players in locker rooms. And, uh, and 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 you're seeing that here. You got to give Joe Douglas some credit. You know they weeded out some players uh, who were malcontents and say an Isaiah. Uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, Elijah Moore uh, last year. And um, you know you've had a couple of guys. You know that you just you know that were complainers or powders. You know Denzel Mims, and they kind of clear they clear those guys out of that locker room. And there's just a very much of a harmony in that locker room. Now listen. The cynic in you would say, hey, well, the, you, you're talking to these guys after a big win. I get it. Everybody's euphoric. But I felt that prior to this as well. So, uh, uh, it, you know, I, I think that this is a pretty legitimately close team, and I think that Sala has a lot to do with that. Yeah, so couldn't give him the credit to Robert Sala there, and that the vibes have been good throughout. And as we mentioned, the Jets have had adversity from the start of the season, obviously losing Aaron Rodgers. So we will see if the good vibes continue around the Jets, but I think they are pretty happy to be 3-3 three and three after six games without their starting quarterback. That is Mark Canizaro. Go check out his two columns either in the paper or at nypost.com, one on Tyrod Taylor, another one on the good vibes and energy around the Jets right now. Mark, always a pleasure to talk sports football with you. Thank you for your time, sir. Good talking to you, Dex. Take it easy.